Uh, it's great uh, that you came on. Now, uh, it needs to be pointed out, you, you have made these allegations uh, about uh, against Nathan Buckley, your former coach, and made these claims about uh, what you saw as your awful treatment at the club in the past. What prompted you on Twitter yesterday here at here to release audio of these conversations? Yeah, look, it's been a nine-year history and I think what prompted me was the time that has elapsed, the time that I've given him to just own the truth, own the facts of the matter. And instead, what he's done is he's continued to undermine my truth, continued to undermine the reality of what took place. And you know, that I just couldn't accept that anymore. I gave more than ample time. It's been almost eight years since some of these incidents happened. And you know, he's got a large platform. He's been undermining the facts and it, it just was intolerable for me. And I had to do what I had to do. I want to go to some of the tweets you put out yesterday. And it all really goes back to one big incident back in 2013, the then Collingwood president, Eddie Maguire, on radio, saying that the Sydney Swan star, Adam Goods, should be used to publicise the musical King Kong. Now, you say you were uh, uh, told by the club you could comment on that. What was your understanding of uh, what the club was uh, asking you to do? Um, the club wasn't asking me to do anything. You know, I was completely shocked when it took place, like a large number of people were. And I was actually even more shocked that the club had yet to put out any form of statement to condemn the comments. So I didn't want that silence to speak for myself. I went to the club, the media department, there were a few key officials there and I asked them if I could make a comment. And you know, they gave me the green light to do so. And um, I guess after that, I found out very quickly that I made the wrong comments, you know, according to them. They actually thought I was going to support Eddie in some way, shape or form. And, uh, you know, as a, as a result of that, I was punished uh, for the remainder of my time at Collingwood for that. And that's what you will see in the or you will hear in the recordings is that the belief was that I threw Eddie under the bus and that I was the problem. So, you know, that's that's in a nutshell the history. Nathan, Nathan Buckley says that in some of the audio that you released of your conversation with him, uh, saying that you, in his view, threw Eddie Maguire under the bus by criticising the then Collingwood president for comparing or saying Adam Gould should promote the musical King Kong. How did that line from Nathan Buckley feel to you at the time? Look, it was... An extremely hard or a difficult thing to hear and it was something that I heard repeatedly in different ways from different people and it just made it ex extremely difficult to exist in that environment and there are a whole number of other issues as well that took place or that were happening which I guess the Do Better report has now revealed and has vindicated what I've been saying all along. Uh, so overall it was a huge challenge for me to be there and to be constantly told that I was the problem when in actual fact I was looking to fix the problem and be part of the solution. The Do Better report was released early last year and uh, sometime after that Eddie Maguire left his job as Collingwood president. Collingwood has put out a statement in response to uh, th these tweets uh, re reiterating its desire to tackle racism in Collingwood. Uh, I'm just reading a bit of uh, the statement now. Heretia, we remain committed to and hopeful of a genuine outcome for any and all of the players who've been subject to racism at the club. Uh, all these years later, do you believe from where you sit and you're still uh, closely connected to people uh, who've uh, been at the club in the past or are still at the club, do you believe Collingwood is making serious inroads in tackling these issues? But what I would say to that is it's not a matter of belief. It's what I know. Uh, not only from my experiences with dealing with the Collingwood Football Club while I was a player and understanding the long way that they have to go to reconcile their past, but more recently in the last 15 months, I've been dealing directly with Collingwood, speaking with multiple board members, dealing with their legal team. And what I've seen is a continuation of their misconduct, a con continuation of dishonesty, and also a continuation of damage control and looking to push out an image that is not based in the reality of the way that they are conducting themselves behind closed doors. So for me, I remain sceptical of any statements that the Collingwood Football Club 
puts out. And I think time will reveal all. And I think that the club has made all these amazing inroads in the space of just over 12 months since the Do Better report has been released. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not the way change happens. So time will reveal if indeed they have transcended this past. But as far as I'm concerned, I think Collingwood Football Club will always remain a club that is associated with racism. Do you believe the AFL more broadly has a problem with systemic racism? Again, it's not a matter of belief, I know so. When you look at the most prominent uh, First Nations players that have played the game, you will see that they all have a history that, most of them, I should say, have a history that is yet to be resolved when it comes to the reconciliation that is needed. We saw recently Cyril Rioli reveal some of his experiences and the way he was treated. We see Leon Davis and, and Andrew Cracker who were part of the process with me. That's what I can only comment on what I was involved in with them. And we decided to walk away because of the way that Collingwood had conducted themselves. I look at what happened with Adam Goods. Uh, I look at Joel Wilkinson, um, a, a person who was on the forefront of really the discourse around racism, uh, bringing it to the forefront in the early 2000s. And I see the way that he's been treated. So this is something that the AFL, unfortunately, is has proven itself incompetent to deal with. And so it really is incumbent on the next leadership because it has so much to do to be able to evolve beyond what is acceptable. Nathan Buckley, your former coach, has uh, responded to your series of tweets yesterday with a tweet of his own. I'm going to bring that up on the screen now for our viewers. He says, Heretia, I offer you the opportunity to put a full and uncut version of our conversations on public record so as to provide context to our conversations and the support that was provided to you above and beyond that which could be reasonably expected in the circumstances. Firstly, I want to ask you, is, have you not released the full and uncut version of conversations, of every conversation you've had and taped with Nathan Buckley? Well, as I mentioned in the tweets, uh, I've been preserving my legal interests for the last decade when it comes to my interactions with the Collingwood Football Club. I had to do that because I saw the dishonesty firsthand. And, you know, I have not released the full versions because it would be countless hours. And what I would say to Nathan Buckley is that this is not a football match. You know, I stopped taking orders from Nathan Buckley a very long time ago. So I will share my truth as I see fit. Uh, okay. So you, you, you're you saying you have hours more conversations that you've taped with Nathan Buckley? I can say that for the last decade of my interactions that I've had within the AFL system, that I've protected my legal rights because of the experiences that I've gone through. So yes, there is a lot that includes conversations that I've had with Nathan Buckley. And there is a lot that includes conversations with other people. And I can tell you upon reviewing those conversations, it really does confirm what I've been saying all along, what really the Do Better report has revealed. And beyond that, what people within the AFL have revealed about the AFL institution as a whole. Heredia Lumumba, thank you so much for joining us on News Breakfast this morning. Thank you. And of course, we offer the opportunity to both Nathan Buckley and the Collingwood Football Club to uh, come onto the show and uh, give their side of the story. They decline, but we did show you the Collingwood uh, Football Club statement and of course the tweet that Nathan Buckley put out late yesterday. Mm.